Today is Monday, June 17th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Mark Soderberg, ADMIS Senior Ag Analyst, and Alan Bush, ADMIS Senior Financial Economist. Mark, starting with the grain markets this morning, with last week's USDA report behind us, what will be driving agricultural prices this week? Well, for starters, uh, at 11 o'clock this morning, we do get a monthly NOPA crush report that will show how many soybeans NOPA members did process in the month of May. Uh, expectations are for crush to come in about 5% over the 169.5 million that were crushed uh, in April uh, and slightly above the amounts processed in <clears throat> May of last year. Oil stocks are expected to uh, drop a, a touch from the $1.832 billion at the end of April. And this will be our first look at soybean and uh, product usage here in May after coming off of disappointing levels here in April. Uh, in last week's WASDE report, the USDA did lower the crush estimate 10 million bushels, which was in line with our expectations. Uh, this afternoon, we'll also get out our weekly crop progress and uh, condition report. We do look for conditions to slip 2 to 3% in both corn and soybean ratings. Uh, soybean plantings are likely going to come in around the mid-90s, and probably the last time we'll see that this the, this year. Uh, look for spring wheat ratings to hold up a little bit better, uh, unchanged at 72%, good to excellent winter wheat harvest. Likely advance about 10% uh, to 22% complete, and that's well ahead a year ago and the five-year average. And then finally, weather. You can't talk about agricultural markets here in mid-June without talking about weather, which uh, for much of this na uh, much of the nation's midsection uh, will feature much above normal temperatures this week. Yeah, let's talk about weather, Mark. Uh, pretty hot out there. How does the current heat affect prices? You wouldn't think the grain prices would be under pressure with these type of temperatures out across the Midwest. Yeah, with the heat uh, really turning up, particularly here in the Chicagoland area this week, uh, while that happens here, uh, the northwestern third of the corn and soybean belt uh, will see uh, much uh, above normal uh, rainfall with more normal type temperatures accustomed to what you're seeing here in June. Uh, much of the, the nation's midsection, the central Midwest and eastern corn belt will be uh, really hot and dry for much of this week. Um, but you know, right now with soil moisture levels as, as high as they are, U.S. drought readings are only at one to two percent for corn and soybeans. Uh, uh, you know, it's really just shrugging off this uh, this short-term heat and dryness with uh, prices down to, pretty heavily to start the week. So we're certainly going to need to see better rain start to fill in across the central and eastern corn belts by late this month, or you're going to start to see more uh, yield-reducing stress on the crop. But uh, for right now, both the 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day forecast do show uh, rainfalls returning back to normal to above normal levels, which is exactly what we're going to need to see. Any of these markets getting overdone on the short side, Mark? I think so. Uh, wheat in particular, to me, stands out as being overdone. Uh, Chicago wheat has now slipped back to the lowest levels uh, in nearly two months. It's more than a dollar and a quarter off the recent high. Similar story with Kansas City. Uh, the market, to me, is anticipating higher winter wheat production. USDA did raise that last week. Uh, but again, I think things are, are are overcooking to the downside as the funds pile on the short side of the market. Global supplies just continue to tighten up. We had lower production uh, in Russia and Ukraine last week. We did see some rain over the weekend in eastern Ukraine, which could uh, bring some short-term relief. But still, very little did trickle into southern Russia. So I think production there will continue to drift lower. So, yeah, I think with uh, September Chicago wheat, uh, a test of $6 is, is worth uh, taking a stab at the long side. Same with SEP Kansas City here on a test of 610. Thanks, Mark. Let's turn toward the financial markets, Alan. Sure. And, and uh, let's talk a little bit about interest rates. How many Fed funds rate cuts are likely this year from the FOMC at this point? I know it's been a moving target, Alan. Uh, yes, it has. There's a lot of controversy as, as far as uh, when the Fed will be cutting rates, and in fact, even if they will. But uh, so the FOMC at their most recent meeting signaled just one interest rate cut, and their dot plot projections uh, basically saying the same thing. These are projections from uh, FOMC members. They're indicating that on average, they expect only one interest rate reduction of 25 basis points this year. 
with four members actually predicting no cuts at all. In fact, on Sunday, we had Minneapolis uh, Fed Bank President Neil Kashkari uh, reaffirming that, in his opinion, it is a reasonable prediction to expect a single interest rate cut this year. Uh, so that underscores the increasing speculation that uh, the Fed funds rate will remain high uh, for the near future. However, this is at odds with what financial futures markets are indicating, and they are predicting two rate cuts for, uh, from the Fed, one in September and then, well, of course, one uh, later this year. And apparently they're looking more at the cooling U.S. inflation data. So I would tend to place more weight on what the free markets are saying about the Fed outlook. Either way, it looks like the Fed will pivot to accommodation at the September meeting. And I think that has some uh, very interesting implications for stock index futures, which would be uh, very much a supportive factor. And Alan, what's the recent reason for the recent strength in the U.S. dollar? Okay, the U.S. dollar index is higher today and is hovering near its highest level since early May. So the U.S. dollar continues to benefit from a sharp depreciation in the euro currency in light of political turmoil in Europe, especially in uh, France after uh, recent elections. So a flight to quality influence appears to be the dominant fundamental supporting the dollar index as of late. And the flight to quality influence is the main, main fundamental. Interest rate differentials, which tend to dominate longer term, are neutral and are offering no clear long-term advantage either way in, in the currency markets. Alan, uh, lastly, uh, what reports, what top reports will traders be watching closely this week? Okay, Tuesday we'll have retail sales expected to be up 0.3%. Thursday, jobless claims, which normally are, are not that much of a market mover, but uh, recently they have come in uh, higher than ex expected and are watched more closely. In fact, it was just uh, last week that we saw uh, jobless claims jumping to uh, 10 month high. So claims expected to be 235,000. And then on Friday, May leading indicators predicted to be down 0.3%. Thank you both. Remember the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like your, more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.